Vanilla Berry. Hello, dudes, dudettes, duders, and everyone in between, and welcome to How to Do Everything So You Don't Have To. I am your host, Jesse Kester, and today we're going to look at how to build a logo bug for streaming on an ATEM series device. We will be using the ATEM Mini Pro, but everything we're covering here would work on anything from the ATEM Mini to the ATEM Mini Pro Extreme ISO or whatever that thing is called. We will be using two pieces of software that includes Adobe Photoshop and of course the ATEM software controller. So you will need to download that from the Blackmagic Design website. Link in the description below. All right, let's get right into it so that you can get back to doing fantastic streams. Our adventure begins in Adobe Photoshop where we will create a new file and we're gonna make that 1920 by 1080 and make sure that your background contents are set to transparent. If they're set to white, black, or background color, this will not work. Click Create, and then go to your logo, select all, copy, and paste, and then resize it to be a not ridiculous size for a corner bug. That looks good enough for me. Next thing we're gonna do is save for the web, and to do that, you hit Shift, Command, Alt, and Save. And if that's too many buttons, you can just go to File, export and save for web. In this window, you wanna make sure that ping 24 is selected, transparency is turned on, and that the logo is roughly where you want it to be. Now we're going to click save and call this logo bug A. All right, so we've got this PNG with transparency and we're gonna load it into the ATEM software controller now. To do that, find your new ping and drop it into your stills pool. Go over to your switcher tab, go to media player, and make sure that your media player is set to the correct file. Next, go to palettes and make sure your downstream key is set to media player one and the key source is set to media player one key. Now we can turn this on and it should look exactly as we expected. And as I switch around, the bug remains in the upper right hand corner. Now, it's a fine bug, but it's a little bit ugly right now. And the reason it looks ugly is because there's a big white square around the circle. So it looks like we copied and pasted a JPEG into our PNG. Let's clean that up right now. To do that, we're gonna go over to Photoshop and we are going to select our wand tool, click on that white area around the logo and then hit delete. And you'll see that now the logo is a circle instead of a square. So let's save that for the web. Click save and we're gonna call this logo bug B. And now when we go back into the software controller, we go to our media pool and drop that logo B into media slot two. Make sure that your media player is set to the correct file and Ta-da! Now it is a perfect circle up in the right-hand corner of our frame, and it looks fantastic. Now, there are a couple of mistakes that are really, really easy to make the first time you do a logo bug, and we're gonna jump back into the ATEM software controller to take a look at those. The easiest mistake to make is to forget to set your media player to the correct file. For example, if I had left this on A, you'd see that it's still that ugly old version of the logo. Make sure it's set to the correct file. The other super easy mistake to make is over in palettes, and that is forgetting to set your key source to media player one key. And I'm gonna show you what happens if you don't set it to media player one key. If we just set it to media player one, it removes all of that transparency information. What's going on here is that the ATEM is actually pulling two types of data from that PNG. On one hand, it's pulling picture information, and on the other, it's pulling not picture information, more commonly referred to as transparency. Not all image containers can handle transparency. For example, the JPEG is a wonderful image format that can't do transparency. GIF can do transparency, but it usually has a very limited color palette. PNG does not have that same limitations to color palette, and that is why we always go with PNGs when we are switching on an ATEM series switcher. If this tutorial was useful in getting you started with logos and bugs for streams that you're doing on an ATEM series switcher, please consider liking and subscribing. If this was not useful, please leave a comment below and tell us where we fell short. We will address those issues in a future video, and the future is a beautiful place because that is where you and I we'll be spending the rest of our lives.
But for now, I encourage you to stop watching YouTube and get back to doing fantastic streams of your own.